Zambezi Zinger is the new for 2023 roller coaster at Worlds of Fun. This is a unique creation from Great Coasters International. It's mostly wood, but it also features some steel track. This ride was the park's 50th anniversary gift and it taps into nostalgia. This is the spiritual successor to the former Zambezi Zinger that was removed in the 90s, hence why this coaster features an odd spiral lift hill. But is this coaster good, or is it purely a gimmick? Find out in this review of Zambezi Zinger. Worlds of Fun opened back in 1973. The park originally had three different roller coasters, with the most popular of the bunch being Zambezi Zinger. This was a rare Schwarzkopf Speed Racer coaster where riders sit in line and navigate a layout with swooping drops. This is the exact same model as Six Flags Great America's Wizard. The original Zambezi Zinger was an absolute crowd pleaser. It appealed to many. It had a low height requirement for kids. Then the layout did enough to appeal to thrill seekers without becoming too intense for those with milder tastes. Cedar Fair purchased World to Fun in 1995 and just a few years later after the 1997 season, the park abruptly closed Zambezi Zinger. This shocked and devastated locals who grew up with the ride. Many were not happy with Cedar Fair because it was one of the first things they did after acquiring the park. No exact reason was given for its removal, but the suspected cause is maintenance costs since Schwarzkopf was no longer in business. The coaster was dismantled and sold to a ride broker, who subsequently sold the coaster to Parque del Café in Colombia. The coaster was then reassembled for the 1999 season, and it has operated as Montaña Rusa ever since. Flash forward to the year 2000. Worlds of Fun opened a new roller coaster named Boomerang. It initially reused the entrance and queue line for Zambezi Zinger, but an all-new queue line entrance was created for the coaster in 2005. This left the old Zinger's entrance vacant for nearly a decade until it was repurposed for a Dinosaurs Alive walkthrough. This opened in 2013, but it closed after the 2019 season. 2023 would be Worlds of Fun's 50th anniversary. It had been over a decade since the park added their last coaster, a Great Coaster International or GCI Wood coaster named Prowler. The park wanted to do something special, so they decided to pay homage to their past. The park started working on a project with a code name Project 2.0. This was because the new ride was expected to be a modern day successor to a beloved past attraction. The two most likely candidates were either Orient Express, an Arrow Multi-Looper, or the aforementioned Zambezi Zinger. The latter became even more likely when the project started being referred to as Project Dollhouse. This is because Zinger's old entrance and queue line was frequently repurposed for a Halloween haunt known as Dollhouse. Then in August of 2022, the park announced Worlds of Fun would be receiving a brand new Zambezi Zinger on the site of the old one. This would be a truly one-of-a-kind coaster. It would start off with a spiral lift hill much like the original Zambezi Zinger. Then it would feature a terrain-hugging layout with a series of quick directional changes. The most shocking part of this announcement was that it would be from GCI. Worlds of Fun had already been working extensively with GCI over the past few years to retract large chunks of Prowler and Timberwolf, so they already had a very good working relationship. But this project was unlike anything GCI had ever done. This would be a true hybrid coaster. Much of the coaster's track would be wood, but the spiral lift and adjacent turnaround would use the company's steel Titan track. I've heard the reasons for this were twofold. One, GCI wanted to have tighter tolerances during the spiral lift hill. Two, they wanted the lift structure to look as close to the original zinger as possible. This would not have been possible with wood track because it would have required more supports. In addition, Zambezi Zinger would be the first coaster to feature GCI's new Infinity Flyer trains. Reception to this announcement was mixed. Locals loved the idea of resurrecting Zinger, but several coaster enthusiasts were left scratching their heads. Worlds of Fun had some key gaps in their coaster lineup. They most notably lacked a launch coaster. One thing they did not lack was a wood coaster. They already had two. Not only that, but they already had a terrain-based wood coaster from GCI no less than Prowler. But I'm pleased to say Zinger offers a much different ride experience than Prowler. I'll get more into this later, but Zinger is more family-friendly and all about the transitions. Prowler is wilder and more about the airtime. Zambezi Zinger was supposed to open late May, but at the very last minute a day before it was supposed to open, 
Worlds of Fun delayed the ride's opening a few weeks. The ride had been seen testing the weeks leading up to the delay, but the park's officially stated reason for the postponement was supply chain issues. It finally opened in mid-June, but the ride has had some technical issues in its inaugural season. Most of the issues seem related to the spiral lift hill, specifically the drive tires. The lift uses roughly 140 different tires to propel the train to the top. That has a lot of tires. I've heard of two issues. First, the coaster often cannot operate in the rain or after a heavy rainstorm. The rubber tires become prone to slipping. In an interview with GCI, the company originally said the coaster would be unaffected by rain, but this has clearly not been the case thus far. I hope the park and manufacturer can come up with a solution for future seasons because this really has been a major issue in 2023. There have been some days where the coaster has been closed all day long after a major storm hit overnight. They simply were not able to dry out the tires fast enough. Second, the drive tires can also wear out. This means they need to be replaced. I've also heard of the coaster frequently running just one train. Not sure if that's a train issue or if it was to reduce wear and tear, but the coaster was thankfully running two for my recent weekend visit. And that's a good thing because it's still at the longest line in the park by far. Crowds as a whole were very light for me, but Zambezi Zinger was still pulling a 30 to 45 minute wait for much of the afternoon. On busy days, the line routinely exceeds an hour. The queue is at least somewhat interesting. It is themed to a safari tour company. You enter through the ride's old entrance. The start has some switchbacks with items. Then the rest of the queue offers some of the best views of the coaster. This ride is almost entirely hidden from the main pathways. It makes it a royal pain to photograph unless you're in a few specific spots. You do get some particularly sweet views of the signature spiral lift hill while queuing. It is so neat to see. Zambezi Singer has two trains but they're much shorter than your typical GCI trains. They feature just eight rows of two, so they hold a maximum of 16 riders per cycle. So when you factor in this ride's capacity, newness, and wide appeal, it's not surprising why it often has a sizable line. So what can you do to beat the crowds? There are three things you can do. First, head to Zambezi Zinger immediately after it opens. A lot of people head here first because it's relatively close to the main entrance, but this will likely be the shortest line it'll be all day. Plus, it also allows you to get on the coaster early in case there's any technical or weather issues later in the day. Second, ride Zambezi Zinger at the end of the day. This is risk reward. The line should be shorter than it was midday, and the isolated setting makes it a great night ride, but there is the potential it could close before you ride it. Not because it'll shut the line early, but rather if it closes due to a technical or weather issue. Third, Purchase a fast lane, skip the line pass. This will bypass the entire queue line, bringing you right up to the station. This also is a secondary benefit. The park only admits enough people into the station to fill the next train, and they will not let you wait an extra cycle if the seat you want is already occupied. From what I saw, they would let fast lane to the station before the standby queue more often than not, giving them the first picket seats. I was able to try Zambezi Zinger in a few different seats, the ride felt fairly similar across the train in terms of forces, but I did have a slight preference for the back row if you're able to get that seat. I thought there are one or two extra spots of airtime. As I mentioned earlier, this is the first time that GCIs used their Infinity Flyer trains, and I have mixed thoughts about them. From the outside, they sort of look like Gravity Group's Timberliner trains, but the seats themselves feel a lot more like Intamin's early hypers. You have cutouts on the floor for your feet, plus a T-bar. I mixed on the restraints. On one hand, they're conducive to fast operations. You have just a lap bar. I know GCI has eliminated the seatbelt on some of their other woodies, but I was stunned to not see them on a coaster at a Cedar Fair park. Cedar Fair puts seatbelts in rides that never had seatbelts before. So not sure what GCI said to convince them not to put belts in this ride, but it definitely helps the operations. I also think the profiling of the T-bar is comfortable, Although, I will note that others have had an issue with the notch that rests between your legs. This leads into the one negative with the trains. The lap bars will come down very tightly. The operators need to push them down pretty far to begin with, but the ride's forces will pull them down even further as the ride progresses. You will be stapled severely by the end. I didn't find this uncomfortable because of the restraint shaping, but it will limit your upward movement. 
this would be a much bigger problem on an airtime-centric ride, but it didn't take too much away from Zambezi Zinger because it's not what this coaster is about. Once dispatched, you roll right into the 74-foot or 22.5 meter tall spiral lift hill. It is much louder than the spiral lift hill in the old Zinger, as you will hear the clicking sounds of the metal anti-rollback strips placed in between the drive tires. You don't get much of a view of your surroundings on the way up due to the supports, but it's neat seeing the lift itself. It's a fun novelty experiencing a different lift hill like this. Then when it opens up at the top, you will get a fantastic view of the layout you're about to experience. The coaster kicks things off with a straight drop. These usually offer some great floater airtime on a GCI, and considering it looks fairly steep, I was expecting some nice negative Gs, but alas, you only get a smidge of floater airtime if you're in the very back row. I think the main culprit is the shorter trains. Remember, most GCIs have 12 row trains, but the drop is still enjoyable and gets you up to speed. It is also worth knowing the track switches from steel to wood halfway down the drop. You get a good head chopper at the bottom, and then you charge into the first turnaround. It doesn't level off sharply at the top like a lot of other GCIs, so you only get a little float up front. It more or less is about changing your direction. Next is this bunny hill that sharply banks left. It feels darn close to 90 degrees. While you won't get any negative Gs, you will get some delayed but very sharp laterals on the twist left. This is when I realized Zinger was more about the pacing and laterals in the airtime. And that is fine because it does those two things really well, especially for a coaster of this scale. You then return to steel track for a turnaround around the lift structure. No airtime into it, but the turn offers some solid sustained laterals. I was honestly surprised the laterals were that good considering the turn is banked to a degree, but I certainly wasn't complaining. The drop off the turnaround switches back to wood at the bottom, but not before those in back get their best airtime. Some okay negative Gs in the descent. Zinger then turns left and flies over a camelback. Up front, you get some weak floater airtime over the top, but the best part about this maneuver occurs on the other side. Because of its placement, you cannot see the drop as you approach it, and you'd think this element has a straight drop on the other side, but nope, it subtly banks right. This gives it a really surprising and nice lateral snap. You then have two low bank turns back to back. They both hug the ground, accentuating the ride's speed. They feel much faster than the ride's posted 45 mile per hour top speed. The first one goes left, the second one goes right, but that's not all. It banks down a hill into a tunnel, and it is super loud in there because the train's roar echoes. You then slightly hop up, and then you have a curved hill upwards into the left. It's not banked as much as you'd expect, so it offers decent laterals on the ascent. I was pinned to the side of the train. Then you have a good sized drop on the other side. If you have managed to fight your restraint, you'll get some weak floater airtime here in the back. You're now at the furthest point and navigate another fast low turn to the right. The transition out of it slightly rises upwards. This gives a nice pop of airtime if you're seated up front. It is the single strongest bit of airtime on the ride in any seat. You then have a series of snappy S-bends on your way back to the final brake run. These carry good speed and they offer wild lateral snaps. They are so whippy. I was not expecting to be thrown around as much as I did. You then hit the brakes and return to the station, ending the 2,428 foot or 740 meter long coaster. I was worried the coaster would feel a bit short, but the length felt satisfactory on ride. As I've already alluded to, this ride's pacing is great. Because this coaster stays low to the ground, you never slow down. You fly from one element to another. It also makes the low turns in the second half feel extra intense. Now what about the smoothness? This is the one area I've seen Zambezi Zinger get quite a bit of flack. Everyone seems to agree the first half is very smooth. This includes the wood parts and the steel turnaround. However, many enthusiasts have noted that the second half shuffles. This was quite unexpected for a new GCI because the company usually has really good track work out of the gate. So how bad is the shuffling? Honestly, not bad to me. The low turns do have a shimmy but it's very tolerable. It feels sort of like some of the bank turns in the smaller gravity groups. I think it's worth monitoring if this worsens in time, 
then it maybe could be an issue for me. So, what would I rate the new Zambezi Zinger? I would give this coaster a 7 out of 10. This is a fun wood coaster. I absolutely love the train use. This keeps much of the layout hidden, which accentuates the directional changes, many of which offer nice laterals. And the low of the ground nature gives this coaster really good pacing. The biggest con with this coaster is the lack of airtime. It is weird to see a wood coaster, especially one from GCI, that is so deficient in this area. It's not a deal breaker for me by any means, but it would have been nice to see some more airtime incorporated into the hills. I also hope this ride's reliability improves in the future, because I was really stressed out going to my visit it might be closed based on the reports of others. So is this better than the original Zambezi Zinger? Unfortunately, I cannot answer that, as I never rode the original at either home. I will say that I much prefer this Zambezi Zinger to the one Schwarzkopf Speed Racer I've experienced in Wizard, but I heard the old Zambezi Zinger was better than Wizzer anyway. What I can say is that I really like what GCI and Worlds of Fun did here. They found a way to honor a classic in a tasteful way. That spiral lift hill is so distinctive, and the new layout captures the low turns and directional changes that the original was known for. While Worlds of Fun had a very long coaster gap in between editions, I think Zambezi Zinger was a worthy addition to the park. The ride pays respect to the past, and the lateral heavy layout is something different from their other coasters. This feels a lot different than Prowler in a good way. I think it'll be interesting to see what GCI does from here. Will other parks want to spiral lift hill a safe space? It's a possibility. I am also interested to see how often GCI uses their Titan Track and Infinity Flyer trains on future coasters, especially on a much larger ride. So those are my thoughts on the new Zambezi Zinger at Worlds of Fun. What are your thoughts on this hybrid wooden steel coaster? Do you enjoy this ride? Let me know down in the comments. If you were lucky enough to ride both Zambezi Zingers, definitely let me know which one you preferred. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.